a neglected test that can save your life. Did you know that there is a simple and easy test that doctors, primary care doctors especially, I'm not here to blame anybody, but I'm just telling you that that is what the statistics say. They forget to test. It's an important test. It can be a strong indicator of a serious health issue. And that test is called microalbumin or albumin creatinine ratio testing. It could potentially save your life. Now, let's talk about this. What is really microalbumin testing? Microalbumin testing is a ur urine test. It's just peeing in a cup. Not that hard. Measures the amount of albumin, which is a type of protein in your urine. It is supposed to be very minimal in there. Very minimal. A healthy kidney should, should filter out most of this protein back into the blood. However, if there is damage or dysfunction in the kidneys, which happens a lot with diabetes, your kidneys may leak albumin into the urine. Why is this important? The importance of this test lies in this predictive power. So, what are we predicting? An elevated level of microalbumin in your urine can suggest an upcoming serious health problem, like kidney failure or even a stroke or heart attack. That's right. The higher the microalbumin level, the higher the risk for all of that. As the kidneys continue to leak more and more albumin into the urine, it is an indication that they aren't functioning as they should. And this malfunction is typically widespread, not just in your kidneys, all around your vascular system. And for the kidney, it will cause kidney failure. For the other arteries, it will cause stroke or heart attack. Now, you will not only need dialysis as a result of that, but you will feel horrible because your kidneys are not going to be able to remove that excess waste and water from your blood. Now, alarmingly, these elevated levels can also signal an upcoming stroke. Nobody wants that. The blood vessels becoming blocked or bursting, which what the stroke is, an event that's in when that happens, the blood supplies to the brain will stop for that part of your brain. Therefore, the simple test can provide an early warning sign for the serious health issues. As a result, you need to take action to prevent those issues, right? Now, how to get tested? Well, fortunately, microalbumin testing is super easy. Like I said, you pee in a cup, it's non invasive. All you need to do is to provide the sample of urine, which can be done at your doctor's office or at the lab or whatnot. All you need is an order from your doctor. It is important to note that this test should not be confined only to those with existing kidney issues because it's the first sign of a kidney issue. Your kidney may look great, okay? It may look perfect on regular test unless you do this test, the urine and the, the albumin in the urine. It can be also helpful in identifying this super early kidney damage so you can reverse it. And if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, or family history of kidney disease, it is crucial to get that test done regularly at least every six months. I personally try to do it every three months. Early detection, as you know, can make all the difference. Now, let's give you some tips keeping your kidneys at top health. Here are some practical tips for you to maintain your kidney health. Number one is, it is crucial to understand the intimate link between diabetes and kidney disease. Now, diabetes is the leading cause of kidney damage, as well as, you know, the high blood pressure. Now, high blood sugar levels can overwork the kidneys, causing them to filter too much blood and eventually wear out. Controlling diabetes effectively can significantly lower the risk of, yes, kidney disease. This involves not just managing your blood sugar levels within target range, which is typically, people always ask me that, less than 120 milligram per deciliter in the morning, less than 180 milligram per deciliter after meals, that's the bare minimum. 
Now, let's talk about um, if you're on medications such as ACE inhibitors or ARBs or Carendia. These medications are actually beneficial to discuss with your doctor about the possibility of adding it to your regimen if you're not already. If your blood pressure, for example, is over 120 over 70, adding these blood pressure medications like ACE inhibitors, uh, lisinopril, although that's not my favorite because it causes cough and some side effects, but Lozartan, Valsartan, these type of medications have very little side effects and can help a lot with your blood pressure and your kidney protection. And your protein in the urine will go down. It will literally repair. And another great option, like I said, is Carendia on top of these medications that also protect your kidneys quite a bit. Like I said, they provide renal protection, kidney protection, reduce the protein in the urine, and reduce your blood pressure. Another promising approach, actually maybe say studied, well-studied, clinically proven approach, is some supplements that you already know of, I think, benfotiamine and alpha-lipoic acid. If you look at PubMed, which is P-U-B-M-E-D, right? That's the scientific Google, right? You can find a lot of scientific studies that suggest that these supplements, benfotiamine and alpha-lipoic acid, can slow the progression of kidney disease, improve kidney function, and even prevent other diabetic complications. Benfotiamine, for example, is a derivative of B1, a fat-soluble type of B1. It's been shown to reduce the formation of what we call advanced glycation end products, or ages you can call them. These are harmful compounds that can accumulate in those with high blood sugar levels. Now similarly, alpha lipoic acid, a powerful antioxidant, has been proven to help reduce oxidative stress that can damage the kidneys and other organs. Now, for the highest quality, some people prefer our alpha lipoic acid and benfotiamine combined. You can check our website for that, sugarmds.com, which we offer all of that together. We provide top-tier supplements that you can adhere because we are adhering to the highest standards in purity and quality and efficacy. Let's talk about the hydration. There is no need to drink excessive amounts of water. That's a myth, really. I mean, when I tell my patients, oh, your kidneys are not doing well, they say, oh, I drink water. Well, that's not how it really works. Um, it's like, you know, your car is not doing very good. Oh, I put gas in there. Oh, it doesn't really work that way. It's important to consume enough to stay hydrated, but the point is don't get dehydrated. Number four, eat a balanced diet. Now, you have to incorporate some kidney-friendly foods to your diet. Now, that includes fresh fruits and vegetables and lean proteins and whole grains. I know there are a lot of carnivores and keto people out there. Well, they're not doing their kidneys a favor. They're creating kidney stones, all sorts of problems. So, keto actually, I'm not against totally keto, but I think keto is good. And there's a recent study showed also that the keto is good if you're doing intermittently, not like your entire life. Um, so, the other thing you have to do is, in your diet, they have to limit your salt intake, sugar intake, unhealthy fats, all that crappy stuff. Omega-6, for example, uh, oils. That's like from vegetables oil, vegetable oils, too much omega-6, uh, or too much um, too much uh, saturated fat. These are, they have to go. Number five, even exercise. Do you think that exercise doesn't help your kidneys? You're wrong. Physical activity actually helps regulate your blood pressure, improve your circulation, and maintain your overall body health on your overall and in terms and in turn will help your kidneys because your kidneys are the one filtering your entire blood number six you have to limit alcohol consumption now excessive drinking can really harm your kidneys so you have to limit to moderate levels less than two drinks a day number seven you have to avoid smoking if you're still smoking that has to stop it's a huge risk for kidney disease damaging your blood vessels, decreasing the blood flow to your kidneys, so that's a no-no. And you have to monitor your blood pressure, that's number eight. Now, hypertension is a leading cause of kidney disease. You have to regularly monitor your blood pressure at home. It will help you dramatically. It will help you understand that you have to take action if it is over 120 over 70 in most cases. Number nine, you have to get some regular checkups. You have to see your doctor. I know most people are too busy to see their doctor, but you will be rewarded. Now remember, early detection is the key, so don't neglect 
that microalbumin test. It is simple. It is an easy test that might just save your life. In conclusion, microalbumin testing may seem like a small but insignificant test for many people, but it has that potential to reveal that vital information about your health. It is super simple yet powerful tool that can help identify serious health issues before they escalate. So don't overlook this. Don't overlook this test. Next time you visit your doctor, if it is not ordered, ask it. It could be a lifesaver. Remember, prevention is always better than cure. Take care of your kidneys and they will take care of you too. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Remember to share, remember to like, and remember to comment. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, it, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.